Hello, my name is Father Gregory Pine, and I am a Dominican friar of the province of St. Joseph, and I am assigned in Freiburg, Switzerland, where I study dogmatic theology, specifically Christology, and it's awesome. Um, <laughs> and in this episode, we're going to talk about prayer, which we have talked about in the past, but from the aspect of whether some prayers are more worthy or more valuable than others. The question is this. I think I just basically said it. Are some prayers from some people more valuable than some prayers from some other people? It's a good question. All right. Um, where does this question come from? Well, I think that it comes from a space where, you know, we want to be the Lord's favorite. I think all of us have designs on enjoying a privileged position when it comes to, yeah, the Lord hearing our prayers and then the Lord bringing our prayers to fruition. How am I supposed to say that? Uh, bringing about the result of our prayers. Gosh, I have lost the capacity to speak. I will try harder. Well, I'll try just about the same amount and hope that it goes better miraculously. Um, all right, so all of us want to be precious to the Lord. We want to know ourselves to be precious to the Lord. And um, yeah, and we want our prayer life to reflect that. Uh, my novice master used to say that God listens especially to the prayers of children and of novices. And I think he said that one is an encouragement for us to pray, but he also said that as a way, you know, like to kind of joke with us, like any us to children, because in a certain sense we were like children. But, you know, we thought ourselves all kinds of cool. Better to know now that we're not that all kinds of cool. Okay, um, so then returning to the question, are some prayers from some people more valuable than some prayers for some other people? I think we have to start with this baseline fact that we are all precious to God, all right? So God loves us each with the self-same act of love. So God is simple, which means he's not like composed of parts. He doesn't have like flywheels and rotors and stuff like that. God just is love. And we are the issue of God's love. So God loves us each, and God loves to receive our prayers. Because a father loves that his children turn to him with faith, with hope, with love, with a kind of expectation that he will provide, and not like miserly uh, rations, but that he will provide richly, that he will provide abundantly for his children. And that is the God that we have. So we know that our prayers are precious to God, not because he needs them, because he delights in receiving them, because he has made us to offer them. So that's the first point. Next point is that God does give us different gifts, okay? So I went to Franciscan University of Steubenville. Each month we used to have these charismatic prayer nights and uh, there were like different teams, uh, and those teams were associated with different charismatic gifts. So there's like a worship leader, and then like a music team, and then, um, I don't remember what this was called, like an interpretation or a prophecy team, and then there was an intercessory team. I was on the intercessory team, which was awesome, because you just kind of stand in the back, and then you pray for the people present, read sacred scripture, pray more for the people present, okay? Why do I say this? Well, I say this because we, we occupy different places within the body. Now, that's... That's true in one sense of the charismatic gifts, but the charismatic gifts aren't, strictly speaking, necessary for each person to have all of them, okay? But prayer is an integral feature of human life. And yet, I use the analogy to show that not all of us are going to have the same experience of prayer. Not all of us are going to, um, yeah, not all of us are going to register the life of prayer in the same way. All right, why is that? Well, because God loves us in distinct ways. So he loves us all with a self-same act of love, but he loves us personally. He loves us distinctly. He loves us in a way that reflects our, our individual vocation, um, and he equips us for that vocation with individual gifts, all right? And so there's, we're going to discover that there's differentiation within the life of the church and, and in and among different Christians. All right, so our place in God's plan, our place in God's providence is somehow bound up with our life of prayer because we're meant to act, we're meant to live, we're meant to know and to choose. And, you know, like we're, we're agents, we're not just passive recipients of the life of grace, we're actually agents in the giving of the life of grace, which means, well, it means a variety of things, but it means that our prayers actually have a purpose. Our prayers are for the glory of God, they are for the salvation of souls, they are worthwhile, they are precious, they are delightful indeed, but they're ours, right? And they're going to reflect our individual time, place, setting, circumstances, our individual, you know, kind of temperament and formation, nature and nurture both, all right? In the order of nature and in the order of supernature. And as, as a result of which, 
It's not for us to say like, oh, lamentably, my prayers don't matter as much, but rather to reflect on the fact that my prayers are my prayers, that God has given me these prayers to pray, and that these prayers are earmarked for the attainment of these or those good things, all right? Now, yes, some prayers are going to be more meritorious than other prayers. Why is that? Well, because some people have been graced with a higher or a greater degree of charity. So like the Blessed Mother, for instance, has the greatest imaginable degree of charity for any human person, um, for any human being who is not the incarnate Son of God. Um, so her prayers are, you know, incredibly meritorious, and they become more so meritorious, or they became more so meritorious with each day, uh, with each passing day of her life. St. Joseph's prayers, incredible, right? So foster father, or father in a certain sense, of, of the only begotten Son of God and most chaste spouse of the Virgin, and, you know, universal protector of the church. So, so he's equipped with a love that outfits him for his vocation, and his prayers reflect that because they reflect the role that he occupies in God's plan and providence. Um, so for us then, the kind of task at hand is to pray from that place, to pray from the place wherein we are loved by God, you know, so, so loved from that self-same act of love where we're, with which he loves all different people you know, human beings, all different Christians, but also with a love that's distinct, which with a love that is ours, right? So like you think about a, a big family and you think about like these different kids in the family, none of whom get lost in the shovel, each of whom knows that they are loved by their parents, you know, specifically that they are loved by their father and who interacts with, you know, their parents or interacts with their siblings, interacts with the world beyond in a way that reflects that love. You've perhaps had this experience where you, where you meet somebody and you find that person so attractive because it's evident, you know, it's abundantly evident that that person knows him or herself to be loved. And so that person is secure in that love. That person is confident in that love. That person can, comports, you know, him or herself as one who is loved. And from that love comes a power. From that love comes a strength. And this is just what we witness in the life of prayer. We turn to our Father not because uh, we're desperate, in the sense that um, this is a last resort. We turn to our Father because we know that He's good, right? And He gives us bread, not a snake, <laughs> okay? He gives us, I don't remember what the rest of that passage says, so I'm not going to keep listing things, but I remember there being like an egg and then a scorpion. All right, so He gives us good things, right? He's, he's not seeking to trap us. He's not seeking to trick us. He's certainly not going to disappoint us. It's for us to open our minds to His plan and providence so that, that we can participate with it more wholeheartedly, so that we can act within it, more perfectly, and so that our prayers can attain to their term. Be they grand or humble, they are distinct, they are ours, they are loved by God, and they are for His glory and the salvation of souls. So, yeah, the principle of, you know, prayer and of its merit is love. And for us, the task at hand is to grow in love, to beg so from God, who is the giver thereof, and to act in accord with the love with which we have been graced. Because in the evening of life, says St. John of the Cross, we will be judged on love alone. Um, all right, so that's my prayer for you. Please pray for me. Uh, this is Pints with Aquinas. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe to the channel and then push the bell so that way you get sweet updates um, uh, as to things which will probably help you in the life of prayer. And then if you haven't yet, please do check out God's Planning, which is a podcast of the Dominican Friars of the Province of St. Joseph. So we have episodes on Thursdays. They're short, 30 minutes, just little topics, all things Catholic, truth be told, but just a helpful way to think well about your life uh, in these wild times. And then we do Lectio Divine on the Sacred Scriptures for Sundays and penitential seasons. We have guests twice a month. We have um, live streams twice a month. So great guests, Father Mike Schmitz, Bishop Barron, Matt Frad, you may have heard of him. Sister Bethy Madonna is coming up. Um, yeah, Scott Hahn just dropped. So lots of good things. All right. That is all that I will say for this episode. I will catch you next time on Pines with Aquinas.